Hi everybody, this is Teresa Alsop and Tammy St. Miller and we are going to be showing you some classes on our machines so that you can be able to look online at any time and watch how to do different things for your machine. All right, so we're going to get started. This is called the Baby Lock Jubilant and it is a great introductory machine. Hey Tammy, will you show them how to turn that machine on? Yes. You know, uh, all machines are basically the same, but then there's little turn-ons might be a different spot. It's a black button, and you just flip it to the back of your machine, and the light goes on. Your machine cannot sew if the light's not on, so that's a little safety feature that's built in. And when you turn that light on, the automatic settings uh, kick on from what the machine was set in the factory. So you can see this goes to... A straight stitch with the needle in the center, stitch number three, with the stitch length at the top, 2.5, and the stitch width, 3.5. So you're actually ready to sew a straight seam right when you turn your light on. That's neat. Okay. Um, I want to back up just a little bit because there's a few things that we've learned that will help you to be a happy sewer, which is our goal. We want you to not be afraid of your machine and also be able to not have all the mistakes happen that we've all learned. You have a wonderful uh, manual with your machine. They come with all the machines. We're particularly fond of the way Baby Lock does their manuals, so I suggest that you don't put this away in a bookshelf or, or stash it somewhere where you can't find it. Keep it close by your sewing machine. You could even hole punch it and put sheet protectors behind it and store some of your samples that you will make uh, as practice. When you get your manual, um, open it up and on the inside cover you can write your serial number to your machine which is on the back. Uh, every machine has its own serial number. and You will want to send your warranty in to the company. And we have, you can go to babylock.com and um, there's a little tab of how to register your machine. When you type in the numbers of your serial number, just leave out the dash and then you should have no problem. If you struggle with it or have a oopsie, then call us and we will help you. Also, you could staple your um, receipt and your name. This will help even family members or, or yourself to remember things about your machine, but don't be uh, afraid of it and when you have extra spare time, uh, be familiar and read through it, just like we read a guide sheet before we make a project. Tammy, when you were talking about the warranty, your receipt, that's a great place to put your receipt because your receipt is part of the warranty. If you ever do need to have something that is warranty on it, the company of any company will ask to see that receipt. And so that is an accommodation. Even though you've registered it online, you still need your receipt. There's important information on that receipt. Wonderful. Just one more thing about your manual. You have troubleshooting places in the back that often, when you're frustrated, you can go read a troubleshooting symptoms and find exactly what your issue is. And try to look and become familiar with these things before you call your tech. But we have, we have the best um, service here at the sewing center, so we will help you too. Okay, let's get started. Before we can start to sew, we've got to know how to wind a bobbin and thread it. So let's begin with that. Um, a couple of care and maintenance tips before I can even tell you that is I ask people and all of us, when you get a new machine, you, you wonder how long is it going to last? Appliances aren't being made to last as long anymore, but I'm so happy that our sewing machine companies are still making a good piece of equipment to serve you well. If you um, follow these tips that I'm going to share with you, your machine will be give you a long life and then you can even pass it down when you're ready to upgrade. These machines are do have a computer inside of them and so they are happiest in a temperate zone. Temperatures where you're comfortable. You don't want to leave it in a storage unit or a cabin or somewhere where there's extreme heat or extreme cold. The best way to save your motherboard and the life of your machine is to be in the temperature where you're happy. So if you need to put it away for a time, 
just get put it in a tote or the luggage you have and put it in a closet. Otherwise, um, it's happy at that temperature. Second thing is to your power cord and your foot pedal cord. We, can, we know this happens because we see it a lot in our shop and maybe even with ourselves. But find a way to label your cords. Uh, whether you want it to be a ribbon or a piece of tape or a luggage tag that t says your name or that it's Baby Lock Jubilant and label your cords because often with all the things we do moving or babysitting or having loved ones move in with us or um, going to two different homes, your cords will get mis misplaced or people have no idea what that cord goes to and then you have to repurchase them. The foot pedal cord especially is a little more pricey than the power cord. One more thing on cords is if you have pets in your home, um, little critters, uh, they love to nibble on our cords. So you may pull them up off the floor when you're not sewing to avoid that because wherever you are, your dog or kitty or sugar glider or bunny or birds, they want to be where you are and they will want to nibble on these wires. And um, we see that too. Common uh, often is where are these plugs uh, plug in, we call these a post where the plug plugs into the machine, the foot pedal cord and the back uh, cord. When you are moving your machine, it's very wise to just unplug these and um, then these posts don't get knocked or damaged or bent or loosened, which would definitely affect the power getting power source getting to your machine or even a shortage. So make sure that when you're moving your machine, you unplug your cords, or if you're bringing them into the shop. Okay, once you get a permanent place in your home, then maybe you wouldn't have to do that. Anything else about cords that come to your mind? No, that sounds about right. Um, a lot of sewists develop their own way for uh, their foot pedal to not slide on the floor. If you like to put a, a Velcro underneath or if you're a barefoot sewer or slippers, we, we encourage you to, to have that or there can be a lift. I've heard you could get um, the grip that you put in the cupboard and that works really nice to go underneath the pedal also. If you're like uh, Teresa and I and you want to sew for hours and hours, I have to put one little plug in just because I've learned this now that I'm older. Find, find a chair that you are comfortable in, not like relaxed comfy, but that gives you good support. If, you, if your body's in an L shape with good posture, then you're not going to be as hunched over and get shoulder ache, back ache, headache. And many chiropractors and doctors see strain from sewing long time all curled up. So get yourself a chair where you've got good posture and it feels good to support you. And then get in the habit of um, having good posture while you sew. And a machine can be pulled to about two inches from the edge of your uh, sewing table. Okay. A couple other care and maintenance. If you like to sew by a sunny window, that is fine, but um, this fiber class just over time might tend to get a little antique looking, maybe a creamy color. That won't hurt your machine at all, but that could happen in a sunny window. So would you use the cover that comes with the machine when you're not this, sewing? Yes, this machine comes with a soft cover. Uh, some, you know, whatever style, there's other options, but some people even sew a cute cover. We do not live in a um, moisture environment. We have a real dry climate, so we don't worry, have to worry so much about the moisture in the air as we do the dust. So a good cover is often recommended if you have one or get one or a pretty towel or something. Even a pillowcase can slide over it, but cover when you're not using it. We also live where there's power fluctuations. And so we suggest you get a surge protector and uh, because this is a computer, have a surge protector and then if there was a power surge, it would stop at the surge protector and not come in and pop the machine. I have seen that at the university happen in the costume shops. So a surge protector is very important. Okay. I'm thinking if that's probably the, the start of, of us getting ready. The only other care and maintenance that's real important at this time is um, 
taking your throat plate off and cleaning and doing one drop of oil. And how we, often should you do that, Tammy? We think about house, our least favorite housekeeping chore. And sometimes people, students will say, oh, it's the um, mopping or the dusting or cleaning the fridge or the bathrooms. But you need to care and maintenance, clean out and dust, uh, declutter your little area about at least every 30 hours of sewing or, or a major project. Many of us have a variety of uh, fibers we're sewing on now, embellishment fabrics or sequins or glitter or uh, with the holidays here we'll see more of those, but velvet, fabrics that are nappy, you would need to clean more than 30 hours. So I would say after a major project. Um, I'm sharing a tip with a famous educator. She said the post-it note company made post-it little post-it notes just for stitchers. But you can, if you don't want to have to keep track of your hours of sewing to, for cleaning and changing your needle, uh, take one little post-it note and you just can put it on the side of your machine here. And every time you've sewn an hour, just put a little mark on there. And then the little post-it note will track your 30 hours of sewing. And you can look and see, oh, it's time to change my needle and time to uh, do my house cleaning chore for my sewing machine that I want to have last a long time and not grumble when I sew. Are you going to show them how to do the oil in the... I think we should. What do you think? I think we should. <laughs> That's an important part. Um, this Jubilant is a wonderful, has a wonderful little add-on tray. So it slides off to the left and it also, the hinge comes forward where you get a good variety and selection of cleaning tools and feet and accessories. Oh, that's what I didn't mention in your manual. Right when you get your manual, um, it's fun when you're home. It's so exciting to get a new machine. Right in the front, they have a page uh, that says included accessories. And it's fun for you to get out your accessories and they'll be in a variety of little places, um, compartments, but get them all out and lay them all out and identify them. They're numbered and then also labeled and telling you a little description of them. Um, in all of our years of being in the sewing business, very, very rarely is an item missing. So they must triple check when they uh, pack these machines. But so should they throw away the box before they do this or after? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I say keep your box. Keep your box and all the careful styrofoam and filler uh, until you've identified that you have all these items and um, even if you have an attic or a good storage place you could fold that box clear flat and throw away the the filler and styrofoam after you've identified that you have everything also the next page shows um, optional accessories so as you get stitching along and you're, you're wondering about the options of extra things for applications you want to make they list the other feed and options and actually the part code. So it makes it easier for you to come and see us and buy your the other feet that you're interested in. And we're going to teach you more about feet in another time. But for now, we'll go ahead and cover the things that we have here in this machine. Okay, I'm just going to, uh, this might look a little sloppy, but I'm just going to dump out that all that collection and spread them out. and find the tool part, the things that are tools. We've got feet and needles and it comes with four bobbins and thread caps. But the tools that I see here first, you've got a, a screwdriver that's a bigger um, head. head and a round coin shaped screwdriver and a cleaning brush and a stylus. So let's talk about those and use them right now to do this care and maintenance. We have um, a top-loading bobbin with this Jubilant machine, which is a really great feature. And you can see what's going on in there. And um, it's also a good reminder of what color thread in case you haven't changed your color, as well as how much thread's on your bobbin. To remove this bobbin cover or door or, or window, people call it different, there's a little um, action clasp right here on the right side. So you can move that to the right and there's a little arrow to sh remind you about it and the window cover pops off and that's what covers this when you're ready to sew there are some painted on markings that show um, 
seam allowance measurements, and you also can get a second one of these covers without those options. But that's an easy thing to lose in your sewing room, so make sure you have a little dish to put things in when you're uh, taking them off. We suggest maybe a little magnetic bowl, which you can get at a hardware shop, or maybe your um, crafty husband has one he'll let you have. Okay, so you can take your little coin-shaped um, opener. Well, let's first let's let's take your foot off. I'm sorry. On the back of where your J foot is on your machine, there's an easy lever that helps you take off and put on your feet. This lever has a black knob on it, and you just press on that, and the foot foot pops off. So we'll take that foot off so it's easier to get in the, to this. And then you also want to make sure your needle is in the highest position so you can get in here and not poke yourself. So you have a needle up, needle down button on the front, along with a lot of other handy buttons. But let's push the needle down or up. Okay, I pushed it and it went up higher. And it also brought the take up lever a little higher. So now it's in the highest position, which gives me a lot more room to get my screws out or to um, change my bobbin or whatever I want to do. Do we do this with the machine on? I, of course, you had to have the machine on to raise the needle, but do you leave the machine on or do you turn it off? Um, in the higher end machines, it will notify you that your power is still on. In these kind, I still like to have my light to see. Okay. So unless you have a different light, I, st I leave the power on and I'm not using any... Um, metal tools to mess around in a place I shouldn't be, so okay. I feel like I'm okay. All right, so you have two big master screws, one on the left upper corner and one in the center right. And our tech has taught us that the best way, and um, it probably doesn't matter, but it, it does help these line up better, if you unscrew the right one first and take it out and then also put it back in first when you're putting this back together. So I'm gonna take my little round screwdriver and if you remember the old adage, lefty loosey, righty tidy. And if your machine is new from the factory, these could be really tight. And I'm a left-hander, so bear with me. That might look a little backwards. Okay, that one did pretty good. Then I can just use my finger and unscrew that the rest of the way, or you can keep using your driver. If you are um, getting along in years and you feel like you have arthritis or limited finger dexterity, there are other little stubby screwdrivers, squatty, with a good grip on the top, and you can get one of those. We carry them here in the store, or you can pick them up at a hardware shop. Okay, now I'm getting the other screw off. One more little go around. It's kind of a um, little bit symbolic to do your cleaning after a project because we remember how good we feel when our project is, oh, we finally have it then. And then you can um, approach and get your machine clean for your next project. This throat plate slides a little bit towards you, I would say about an eighth of an inch, so that it's uh, lifted off the front of the, the bed of the machine and then it lifts upward and the machine's letting me know that I have taken it off. The throat plate is um, made of two different mediums, but there's fiberglass, plastic where it needs to be, and metal where it needs to be. And they fit together like a Lego or a puzzle. And you don't worry if they come apart. Sometimes they might stay together, and sometimes they'll come apart. But when I get that off, I like to examine it and flip it over and make sure there's not any little extra threads. It's good to become familiar with the look of it so that you don't accidentally bump or break or f change something that's supposed to be there. Okay, this is your feed dog area and that's where the needle's gonna be going in and out and the feed dogs will be moving along in here. Sometimes if we have some bad habits and we're trying to shove our fabric along, the needle will glance off and maybe hit one of these places and become uh, you'll feel a rough place or a little burr, and it can even be on the underside. But that sets you up to have thread breakage and do some other damage. So 
Um, I like to check that out after I've done a big project and make sure I haven't done anything that would cause me further misery with my stitches not looking pretty or breaking thread. And a tech can buff that out if you've done something really um, heavy duty and damage that area. Okay, so our, thre our plate can come out now and we're looking in here and we see our bobbin case. This is a bobbin case that stays in the machine that you don't have to take out all the time, but it also needs to come clear out. And if you look at this bobbin case, it's an interesting little conglomerate of shapes and it has a little layer of carpet or a little toupee as we tease about, but that's there for a purpose. Don't mistake it for um, a dust bunny and try to peel it off because it needs to be there. It goes right in front of the feed dogs and um, helps the thread move along. Also on this um, bobbin case, you see a hook area. It just looks just like a hook. And there's a little dotted white diamond that helps you to line it up. I like you to recognize those things. And on this outside, there's a little nubbin or a wart. Um, and it's there to abut the metal in your machine. So just find those things. And I Show like, them where the wart is again, Tammy. Um, right here on the side of your bobbin case, All there's right. a little a little thing poking out. You can feel it with and your finger. And that just helps it puzzle piece back into the to, oh, your yes. hook assembly. Okay. Yes, so that you know that you've put it in correctly. And when the whole machine is rotating, this will stay put if you've, if you've lined that up. Okay. I just like to recognize this shape. I call it a little slide-in uh, trough, uh, an opening, as if that was a swimming pool. But anyway, it always goes to the right. So by recognizing these shapes and wh what's there, it will become more familiar to you as you're loading it and unloading it for cleaning. Okay, we'll set that aside and look inside here now and um, see the, the, the way it is. And you'll often be so surprised about how much lint can collect. If, if you tend to use cheaper threads, you will have more lint from your thread. If you have those nappy fabrics or um, specialty fabrics, things will just drop and fall and be all in here. And so you want to clean really well. And this brings up a lot of questions. People will say, well, my grandma used to blow, you know, get and blow your breath. Your, our breath has moisture in it, so you do not want to do any blowing. And that might be a habit you have to work on breaking. We joke about there's a sewing 12-step program, so you can get rid of all your bad habits. <laughs> anyway, that's one. What um, about canned air? Can they use canned air? A lot of you enjoy canned air at your computer, so that's another good question. If you have canned air, you want to have your canned air be sprayed from this back side forward, so you would turn your machine around and, and blow the, the canned air so it's blowing and hitting it and coming out this way. We want to do everything we can to avoid any um, lint or any particles going into the right side to of the, the right side where the motherboard is and the other gears that are all moving to create your stitches. Okay, so I'm going to liken to our um, piece of equipment here to a car. When you all got your first car, uh, our dad's or the auto guy told you to, about air pressure in the tires and the oil. You cannot, if you drive your car and tell there's no oil in it, what happens? <laughs> uh, you, you drive Bad it news. until the motor, <laughs> the engine gets a crack in the head and it's done. There's no fixing a car when it's out of oil. And that is really similar to a sewing machine. Um, when our techs get a machine and, in and they say, oh, my machine's all froze up, I don't know what's wrong or what happened. But it's because the machine it just chugged along and chugged along till finally it stopped because the gears were all so dry that it could not go any farther. And sometimes our tech can revive them and sometimes he can't. So we don't ever want to reach that point. But your machine will talk to you and when it's sounding um, like it's really working hard or chugging along or stiffer feeling, then you know it's time for oil or that you missed that 30 hours. I don't know if the camera can get down in there, mm -hmm. and I need to uh, grab an oil can. I'm going to do that real fast. So while she's grabbing the oil, I'm going to talk about sewing machine oil, and it's very important that that is the only type of oil you use, is a sewing machine oil. 
sewing machine oil is the purest oil on the market. So no, it doesn't matter how handy your man is, don't let him talk you into something else. Uh, even if you have some that's discolored, it will still be fine. This oil is so pure that you can use it for um, lotion or eat it. <laughs> what kind of oil are we using, Tammy? This is called a Dritz Zoom, uh, well, it's just a Zoom spout, but it's um, a clear, only for sewing machine oil. I believe it's um, called um, aqueous lanolin is the way I learned it. And it's very, it is so pure that when I put one drop on this disc down under this bobbin case area, it melts and it spreads out. And so in between your well care visits to your sewing machine tech, you can, um, I love this bottle for the spout. In fact, it's worth its weight in gold, and even if you use up, it'll take you most of your lifetime to use up one bottle of oil, but if you could see, I put that one drop of oil on, that little disc that's in there, and then I'm going to take my hand wheel, and um, you never want to turn your hand wheel away from you. It only turns towards you. Ah, so but, just one second, let me show it. I didn't get that part, so show them the way that you're supposed to turn the hand wheel. You turn the hand wheel always towards you. Okay. Yeah. But for just one stitch, the hand wheel is one complete turn. So you can see the needle went clear down to pick up the bobbin, but that's just one stitch. So some of you like to know how many stitches a minute your machine can sew. But if you can imagine... Let's say Jubilant, I believe, can sew about 800 stitches a minute. So if it, it has all that action for one stitch, think of how much action really, really fast would be to do 800 stitches a minute. So it stands to reason that we need to keep that lubricated and oiled. And you know, I like now that we have learned so much about long arm quilting and the bobbin case area they have, you cannot have a machine have top thread me to bobbin without oil and they they often oil their bobbin case area daily correct yeah so your sewing machine is such a workhorse for you don't neglect to oil can they That's over oil, oil if they're doing it more than every 30 hours um <laughs> That's a good question. I would say rarely, but there are, are times that when somebody's trying to oil in a place up here they shouldn't, oil will spill on a little drip will get on their fabric or their project. So that would be awful. So that's the so, only place. A, this is the only place. A sewer should put it. All the other places that oil or grease needs to go, a tech should do. Yes. Okay. If you tend to sometimes sew with a self-adhesive or sticky sprays, there's a time... I tell people to keep a little chamois cloth like you clean your glasses, and you could put some oil on the chamois cloth and just oil this shaft that goes up and down. But that's okay. just if you're doing um, real heavy specialty things. Another tool, a couple tools that are handy in this area, is you might like to have a, uh, not a pipe cleaner, a Q-tip and a uh, um, pair of tweezers. Because you can reach in. I think I brought a pair of tweezers. Just reach in. You might find a thread over here in some different little place. Or a glob of stuff. Or sequins. Or glitter. There's just times that those extra little tools might be helpful. So you can have your own little toolkit. And uh, certainly this one is the best. We, again, don't want to put in sharp things that are metal down in these areas. Uh, if you were to break a needle and part of the needle fell down in... You could get another set of hands in your household and help you turn the machine up, up and down and shake it, but you don't want to be down in here trying to dig around. You might damage something. Your tech could really help you too if you need to get out a piece of needle, and I'm sure it wouldn't be costly. <laughs> okay. So you're going to show us how to put it back together? Yes, and don't be afraid. I, I'd like to stress that. Don't ever be afraid to clean your machine. These are resilient, and there's no way that you can really truly... We're hurry, hurt them. All right, so this one, the throat plate, and the, and the two parts are back together. And so, and I've got my bobbin case right here, so I'm going to put this back on. So you I, don't put the bobbin case in first? Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I, Bernie just told me you do it afterwards, so I was just curious. Back down in here do, after? Oh. Yeah. Uh, now, in the training I got, you put it in first. Okay. But you could, it, it would work both ways if you've forgotten. I just think it's more cumbersome. 
and I like to do, I call it my insurance policy. By doing it this way, I can test and make sure I got it in correctly. Okay, so we're going to put the bobbin case in, and um, you can hold it in your finger, your hand, but you kind of dip it down, turn it sideways away from you, and dip it down in that little thing so you can get under the feed dogs. Then there's a little uh, lip that it should set on. And so you want to set it on there and you should hear a little click. Oh, I just heard the click. And it now it seems more secure and fit. I'll take that back out again. But if you look, you can see that little wart or nubbin is abutting this metal piece right here. And the white diamond painted on is lining up with the white circle that's right here. So those are your two clues that you have it on correctly. And um, I will show you. I will do the hand wheel again towards me. One, one complete turn. And you can see all the action going on. And the bobbin case is staying stationary. So if that bobbin case is moving around at all, you need You've to... You've got it in wrong. Okay. Or not in properly. Or it didn't set down. And you can look. There's a little uh, in molded in lip right here where the groove is cut out as a groove. And that's where the bobbin case has to set. And as soon as you look and recognize that, it will mean more to you and help make sense that you can set it on that little ledge. Um, line up your color. Oh, did you hear that click again? There's like a little click noise when it's when it's comfortable on that ledge, that metal ledge. But now it, it moves that much, but it's not popping up. If you get your machine all put back together, and um, the stitch is icky right away, ugly and globby, then you, and it makes a noise, sounding noisy, you'll know that bobbin case didn't get in right. But I like to check that out before you put the cover back on. For my insurance policy. Oh, so, I like that insurance policy. <laughs> so I don't have to undo it again or have a, have a little thing. They don't get damaged generally, but okay, so I didn't point this out. There's a little finger poking out there. Show them oh, the sorry. little um, knob on the plastic also. Back here. Where it's going to go into this oh, hole yes, here. Oh, yes. There is. This is, again, like a little puzzle. Little, a little puzzle or little snaps. There's two. It's little... like a 3D puzzle. Yes, it is. Oh, Minecraft. My grandkids would love it. Two little windows right here, and there's two little hooks, little things. That for and they just have to in. fit into that, that little, those openings. Yes. Okay. And then that finger goes down. So when you place it on, it'll still be pushing out here a little bit, and you slide it over. And so it gives you about on. an eighth of an inch? Yes. It's and just, it's just secure and firm, isn't yes, it? Yes, and some people worry, oh, is something wrong? It's moving around. But that's how it is, so you can lift it up and take it off. Okay. You push it to the back, and then remember, we want to do the right screw first, because that helps it all line up for the left screw. I'm sure you could probably do it the other way, but um, I like to follow what our, our, te our tech says. Yeah, I like things to be as easy as possible. Now, where did my little... There it is, right here. Again, we did let Lucy, Lefty Lucy, to loosen it. Now we're going to turn it to the right to tighten it. And um, this is famous words I always share in class. The more you do it, the better you get. So... This will, you can you can shake off some minutes of cleaning. The more you do it, you'll get. So you can do it pretty quick. Get these off and clean. And now, that's your putting your screw back in. We say you just nestle the screw in. You don't have to do it really tight. We don't need those automatic screwdrivers to do that. Just nestle it in. Um, it, it doesn't have to be tight, tight. Okay, now we'll do the left one. So by putting those screws in, you're automatically putting that plate in the right position. That's right. It secures that it's in the right position. And that that, that affects all the alignment of your feed dogs and your um, needle going down to pick up the bobbin. All of those things. It makes sure it's in place just right where it needs to be. Even the needle threader that we thread our needle with. There's quite a bit of detail that goes into that. Okay, and then once again, I still do the hand needle one hand wheel one more time towards me, and see the needle go down and back up. All right, well, are that's all that's awesome. So this is a lot of care 
that we're, we're taking, and it's just about 30 hours. Some people will sew eight hours in a day, but most people aren't doing the whole eight hours in one day. No, it might be a weekend or um, a week. Uh, now that we're trying to get more projects done, you might do more now and then not might go a month or so, but, but please make sure you do that and your machine will love you. Uh, one thing I remember from training that they told us is Baby lock machines sew so quiet, and I know other companies do too, that you could sew in the same room someone is sleeping. And I re remind myself of that, because if my machine's being a little noisy, I'm like, hmm, I wonder how long it's been since I changed my needle or cleaned, or uh, am I forcing or doing something I shouldn't, because okay. the machine shouldn't make noise. So we're going to go into another class um, and talk about needles and thread and how often you should change that. That is part of a, um, taking care of your machine, but we're going to go into that in another class. But we want to thank you, and that's our jubilant. Yay!